Hey everyone, and I hope you're doing well. Um, I just thought I'd come on today and give you a little bit of an update uh, with what I've been reading and um, yeah, just, just some thoughts on the books that I've, I've finished in the last uh, week or two. So the first one I'll start with is um, this, it's Dark Continent by Mark Mazower. And what this book normally is the history of Europe from really the end of the First World War until about the fall of the Soviet Union. And I'll, I'll get into like where, where the book ends in a minute. Um, it is held up as a very good history of that. And I'd agree. Um, it's the first sort of half is truly like a masterpiece it's really really excellent um what he's doing in the first third to half of the book is drawing this like this map of or, or a, a picture of the clash of ideologies that's going on in that post-war period or what we would now call interwar period between fascism and Bolshevism slash communism and liberal democracy and examining the ways in which one liberal democracy starts to fail in Eastern Europe um, and even in some places in, in Western Europe and then the rise of fascism and communism and how that dynamic works and he does it from quite a traditional historical perspective in that he's examining the, the social uh, structure and the economic structures and the um, just the cultural changes that take place because of of the war and one of the best chapters in here I think it's chapter two or three um, where it, it talks about healthy, bo it's called healthy bodies, sick bodies. And it talks about how the, um, the war has a, this physical aspect to it. How in previous wars, in Napoleonic wars, for, for example, the, the um, impact on the body wasn't as, as stark. Of course, you had the um, you had the impact, like people dying, people getting injured, uh, but not to the extent that you get in the First World War. And then this comes back into into normal society at the end of the war. You have these people who have been maimed, who have lost limbs, who have got psychological in injuries, and they have to integrate back into society somehow. And along with that, you've also got the... Uh, he, he has a great discussion of gender and how gender roles change during the war because of this progression towards total war that you see in the First World War. You get women having to move out of the home and into, into the... Uh, the workforce to support the war effort and then when the men come back now there is a question about how women do they move back into the uh, into the home or have they gained another sort of uh, um, level of citizenship per se um, so and then, and then there's also the discussion around how this total war where the, these countries are relying on conscription armies to protect themselves and how the birth rate becomes a massive issue, this declining birth rate after the First World War and how that then affects things like abortion laws and contraception laws and um, how Mother's Day is comes out of this period where the, the governments are really trying to promote the role of, of women as, as a mother because they wanted to make sure they had a healthy population for the next war. Um, so it's really, really fascinating, that, that first section. Um, and then, as happens with some books, towards the end it seems to lose focus. 
it seems to be skimming over things a little bit quickly. And this is for two reasons. One, I think Mazawa is a specialist on the earlier period, so he just is naturally going to write more and better on that period. And also, I think um, the, the book was published in 1997, and so I imagine he's obviously writing it for maybe three or four years prior to that. And so the fall of the Soviet Union, for example, is only four, five, six years prior to when he's writing this book. And so that's not history at that point. To us now, it's history. And to to Mazau, when he's writing this, it's not history. The, the century's even over. It's called Europe's 20th century. But the century's not even over when he's writing this. Um, I mean, the fall of the Soviet Union is as far away as, like, Brexit, the Brexit vote is for us, and the Brexit campaign is for us. So certainly um, the end of the book is a little bit brief, but that's probably a, a good thing, if, if not anything else, because it's, going, uh, it's, not, it's not trying to do something that you can't do that close to the events. So that was the, um, the first book I wanted to talk about. The next book I wanted to talk about, um, and I finished this, about a week and a half ago or so, is Castles of Steel by Robert K. Massey. Um, and I spoke about this in, I think I called it, uh, a few weeks ago. This book is about the um, naval war um, in, in the First World War. I, I can't figure out a, a, a good way to say that, like the naval aspect of the First World War, the naval war. Um, I, I don't know a good way to say that, but uh, it's about the naval war and in 1914 to 18. And Massey just does a stellar job of, of writing this. It's because naval battles are these things that like, they take hours and hours and hours to, to develop and it's just, Thousands of shells are being thrown from one line of ships to another line of ships. Or there's a pursuit that's taking place and like the overtaking speed is three knots. So it takes hours to catch up. Um, and, and in many cases, when a battle is about to happen, one side pulls out because they don't want to risk their ships. And so it has the potential to be extremely, extremely dry material. But... Massey just does a, a masterful job of showing you the stakes of these battles. One from the the perspective of like the ships that are being staked in these battles, but also the personal reputations. And the book is billed as um, Britain, Germany, and the winning of the Great War at Sea. But it's, it's mostly about Britain. Um, and I suspect the subtitle is a publisher thing, um, not an author thing. Um, this is written to be a history of the British effort, more so than a history of the, the German effort. Um, and so you get the characters like Jackie Fisher and John Jellicoe and David Beatty and Winston Churchill and how in the Admiralty and within the fleet there, there's this like pushing and pulling and what's at stake in these battles is these people's reputations and he builds this up so well um, I thought the the way the chapters are, are put together in that you get chapters where you're focused mostly on the people and the admiralty and the decision making process and those sorts of things and you get chapters on what's happening at sea and you sort of get this duality of of these things happening so you see like the setup and what's going to happen back home and then you see what's happening at sea and then along with that you get a naval history you get how were these naval battles fought what were the, the challenges like in in terms of signaling to the other ships like you don't realize how primitive the technology was like they didn't have radios really to talk to each other they had they, they did have radios but they were not uh, super reliable so they were using flags to 
communicate with each other, but then these are steamships, they're burning coal. And so they are, uh, like, you can see in, in this photo on the back, like the amount of smoke coming out of the top of the ship. Um, and they would obscure the flags. And so there was this just fascinating dynamic of how the battles were fought and how the outcome of almost every battle in here was down to the communication between the fleet. Um, and it's just fascinating. Um, so I definitely want to pick up Massey's Dreadnought. I want to see what that's about and, and read that. This was just an uh, excellent book. Um, highly, highly recommend picking it up if um, you come across it or um, it's available on Kindle and things like that. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, so those are the two books I've finished recently. So thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave any comments below for um, what you thought of these books if, if you've read them. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.